Thank you, Steve. Um, I'd, if any of you out there are English majors, and if you take a look at the front of your program, what does it say? It says what's going to be on my first chart with an addition of uh, a punctuator, and that is accelerating road vehicle automation. One who takes a look at the front of your program might be, if you're an English major, say, well, this guy is not talking about space vehicles. He's talking about road vehicles. And, and that's not the intent uh, of my presentation. Instead, it's, it's the intent for me to present uh, the position of, of, of representing the road. So far, you've heard speakers talk about the ingredients to a transportation system and very little about this ingredient, which is the highway system. Most of the uh, speakers have talked about the person, the traveler, and uh, as well as this neat vehicle that's going to happen. But who's this guy coming from Federal Highway Administration to, to, to give us any insight with regard to all these neat concepts? Well, the reality is this. This is the reality. And what you see is a road vehicle system. It's a transportation system. It's not a vehicle system, it's a transportation system. And when I talk to the heads of, of driverless vehicle interests, and I say, well, if I view the taxpayer as the customer, and we as the Federal Highway Administration, what can we do, what can we do to help stir this market on, to, to, to increase this marketplace? And the response was, well, our vehicle can pretty much operate on its own, but what you really could do to help us is to make sure that uh, the lanes are marked properly. And I took that with some disappointment, but on the other hand, uh, he had a very good point. And indeed, that is part of Federal Highway's mission. I think the vision that we have, and could radically change this, this view, people of you have experienced this view, what if this view were one of everybody there traveling 45 miles per hour? That's the vision. And it represents a road vehicle traveler system. So how can infrastructure support an automated transportation system? Well, and if you keep in, if you keep in line the, uh, uh, the comment of the uh, road driverless vehicle company, you see that, that I think the role of the Federal Highway Administration is one of, is not the Big Bang Theory, you know. Voila, these cars are going to be out there and everybody's going to be using them. But instead, an evolution is, is kind of the vision that we have. An evolution that represents getting us to use the technology in a way that's seamless to the user. In a way that people don't think about these things. For example, electronic braking systems. It's transparent to the user. How can we introduce increasing automation to do this? And the role of Federal Highway is accelerating this information delivery. And we see that as a very important part. And it's not just the information about where a crash happened, but it's where a crash is going to happen. And if you think about crashless vehicles, and you take that away as a component, people oftentimes forget that there are constraints on the system that currently exist because we can't necessarily dig our way out of congestion. How many times has there been no crash whatsoever and you've been on a three-lane highway which automatically or comes two-lane highway? And that's a bottleneck. Um, there's no automated vehicle that's going to change that reality. And so what we try to do is accelerate um, information and I'm going to provide you some demonstrations of this. But you can see we're getting now to the technology of providing drivers traveler times on roadsides. And, and through automation, we can in increase this kind of capability into a, an automated capability where a vehicle can use this information and take a route, make a route diversion decision based on these advancing kinds of information. Work zone information. What automated vehicle is going to know when a DOT is going to provide a work zone? Right? Um, it's going to be few and far between. Our role is then to accelerate the distribution of this information 
in a way that somebody doesn't have to come upon this uh, in an unexpected fashion. All right, now let's think of the problem of a driverless vehicle that is dependent upon us to paint lane markers. Well, that, that's quite a problem in snow, isn't it? So, so what kind of challenge might we look at? What are the futures of this kind of technology? How can the infrastructure help in this? Well, you know, maybe that's not a bad idea is to improve the lane markings. Maybe you, by looking at nanotechnology, working with somebody that can in increase the intelligence of the lane marking system to communicate to vehicles where that lane is. Well, Joe, that's kind of a crazy idea. Well, I don't know how crazy that is. Um, there's certainly things we can do in that. Another thing that the road infrastructure can do is communicate electronically to the vehicle, for example, at intersections in streets, when a car in an urban canyon where there's a building is about to run a red light. The infrastructure can then communicate that information to the vehicle that heretofore doesn't know about that. Incident management information. Where, where does this incident happen? So this is kind of a reactive kind of thing. How do we distribute this information to vehicles and to people who drive them? So the benefits of, of a transportation infrastructure provided information. Reduce the safety risk by providing redundant information. How many folks, when you, when you saw the first person go into space, you heard the news reporters and everybody you know, talk about problems with systems, and gee, we've had a very dramatic instance of the life of a human being, a crew, not being able to come back. Well, what saved? What saved that? It was the intelligence of the operators and the designers of the system who, guess what? They had redundant systems, backup systems. People had thought through many of these things. That particular instance, they didn't think about too much. But nevertheless, if you talk to anybody in a highly sophisticated uh, environment, the Air Force, for example, you know, if you lose a system, what do you do? Well, the same principle applies with uh, highways. We can provide vehicle manufacturers a sense of redundant information. What happens if you go under a tree with GPS? Okay, so, you know, it, it's not a, uh, a, you know, a locked-in uh, solution. You know, there are many unknowns that occur. We can accelerate deployment through cellular connectivity, and I'll talk about that. That's not to say we're not interested in dedicated short-range communications. It clearly has a safety advantage that must be pursued. But from, a vehicle, uh, uh, from, from a, the vehicle manufacturer's perspective, there's a lot that can be done to accelerate in their communication of information to drivers. Improve throughput and fuel savings at connected traffic signals. What automated drive vehicle company um, knows when the traffic signal changes? Increase national productivity by truck platooning in managed lanes. So when you say safety is our number one priority, which it is, my mantra is always that safety and mobility and the environment, fuel savings are inextricably intertwined. When you stop a crash, when you have a crash, you're stopping traffic. And when you have a lane that drops from three to two, you're increasing the probability of a crash, aren't we? So, uh, we look towards improving the productivity of the system. Truck platooning is a way of improving the mobility of our uh, transportation of freight, and we're very much interested in that. So we kind of like to think about this instead of as a vehicle system, but it, instead as a connected system, whereby connected automation occurs from a transportation system perspective. It's not just about vehicles. It's not just about trains and, and, and cars and planes and buses, but it's also about freight. It's about parking places. It's, a, talk, uh, uh, it's about um, major employers and buildings communicating seamlessly with each other in a transportation system approach. And so I'm proud to be one of those federal agencies that's up here to present because we view this as a system. We're the Department of Transportation. We're not the Department of Vehicles. We're not the Department of, of, of Safety. Um, we are the Department of Transportation. And the ITS Joint Program Office, to whom I'm very much indebted, brings us players together 
And so we don't talk about just highway safety. We talk about the entire transportation system. So what's our role? Well, we would like to assist the states with guidance. Um, these are the infrastructure owners who are saying, my goodness, these, these new technologies are coming out. What do we do? And indeed, um, we would like to provide the guidance for that. And indeed, if you take a look at the, uh, if you take a look at the connected uh, vehicle future, there is indeed a milestone for the Federal Highway Administration to provide guidance to the states with regard to how to, how to handle this. Working with industry on standards, there's, I don't know, maybe a handful of traffic signal manufacturers. Wouldn't it be great if they had a standard so that when they communicate what their traffic signal phase and timing is, they can do it in a seamless way where you have a black box and you can provide your competitive advantage but through a standard interface. So we're very interested in that. And developing the technology and partnerships to enable new information markets. So I'm going to dwell a little bit on the technology. All right, here you have Interstate 66. And what I'm going to do is show you a simulation that we've done. We work with VDOT, uh, the Virginia Department of Transportation. And at the bottom, what you see is a scenario where you have four, uh, uh, two lanes merging with two lanes, ultimately becoming three lanes. And if you look 75 yards beyond this picture, they become two lanes. So what we've done is, is done a simulation and calibrated it so that it's, it's accurate. It, it portrays this particular roadway at this particular time. Well, the upper scenario is one whereby and people have said, oh my goodness, maybe we can regulate speed limits and that kind of thing. And is that going to be unsafe? Well, what we're going to show uh, you, uh, and, and if, so if you take a look at that uh, a speed limit sign, which currently says 55 miles an hour, if indeed you have a God's eye perspective, instead of one vehicle concerned about in a millisecond hitting the next vehicle, what you can do is create an environment where you decrease the probability of those cars having to, to, to deploy that one millisecond system. Let's make the transportation system smoother flowing. And so what we've done up top is um, consider the speed limit of 55 being some form of guidance to a driver, or maybe it's an automated system that gets this information and gets it into their cruise control system, and instead of being concerned about variable message signs and being distracted by that, I make a decision that I'm going to accept an advisory speed that a traffic management center or some other prescient uh, uh, competitor in industry can recommend, which is what we're going to do, um, what happens when we do that? And so I'm going to show you this simulation, which we've done at our Saxton laboratory. And so keep your eye, keep your eye on that speed limit sign. And if I can, I think I just cursed wrongly. There we go. All right, so remember, what you have down here is regular flowing traffic. Up at the top is when you start becoming informed by about, you know, what's going to break down in this transportation system. And you'll see the 55 mile an hour speed limit, and you can see the traffic's flowing, you know, pretty much the same in both. All of a sudden, the system up top realizes that, gee, in order to stop the, the breakdown of traffic ahead of, ahead of time, Let's be prescient on our own way and tell people ahead of this, uh, this, this situation. Notice now we're at 50 miles an hour up top. Look what's happening at the bottom. What's happening at the bottom? Now, can an independent driverless vehicle take care of this situation? Well, maybe in the future at some point in time. But it's very clear, and ultimately the speed limit drops to, to 45, et cetera. So it's very clear, and, and, and so here's the bottom line. That upper system was not 100% market penetration, it was 20% market penetration. So the dramatic scene of traffic backing up here and traffic up here is only with 20% market penetration. That's what the infrastructure can help do. And if you, if you look at the um, uh, speed ranges, you'll see that indeed the speed range um, for the assisted version went between 32 and 64 miles an hour relative to zero to, I don't know, 45 miles an hour. You know, that's the range. That's significant. So what are we doing? We're going to be working with VDOT to actually prove this through. All right, here's another example. Uh, this is, this is a, a, a simulation of a system I like to call electronic glide path. What if I had an algorithm in my vehicle that got this information from a traffic signal, 
What if I knew when that signal were going to change? And how might I create an electronic glide path to get me through that signal? What happens then with regard to some of these metrics that we've been talking about? And I'm hoping once again to be able to scroll. Here we go. So what you see is by trying to keep the speedometer in the green range, um, it, what it can do, and I don't know if you see on the right, but ultimately it gets to a traffic signal. Um, and what happens is the traffic signal turns green right at the time that the car approaches the signal. And that does so because of the algorithm within the car providing the speed guidance. So what happens when you do that? What kinds of, of results do you get? Well, these are the results that we showed at, at our Saxton lab at Turner Fairbank Highway Center. 25, 25 miles per hour, you get the best result. But you're looking at an average of an 18.1% change in fuel savings. Wow. I listened at ITS America's annual meeting. At the very end, they had the head of operations of FedEx there. Head of operations of FedEx. And you know what they do? They buy their trucks, and they come in, and they re-engineer the transmission of the trucks to give them somewhere between a half mile per gallon to one mile per gallon. OK? That's what they do, and they save lots of money doing that. Imagine these kinds of savings, certainly not rolling on the road. These are arterials. And imagine that this is just kind of a theoretical. Or, you know, it's, we've shown it going through a signal, but in the real world, it might be a little different. You know, even if you bring this down to 5%, you're talking about a big difference. Several years ago, we looked at the idea of bringing cars together using vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. And many of you have seen these kinds of demonstrations, which by the far, far and above occur more in Japan and in Europe than in the US. Heck, nab it. So I got one more video to show you. And so this is a video of three automated trucks with trailers going at 55 miles per hour at a six meter gap. Six meters. What does that do? Well, it provides a drafting effect for the trucks. And indeed, funny thing is, is even the lead vehicle uh, gets some advantage there. What are the results of that kind of thing? Well, this was a, our sponsored research, and we showed an energy savings of 10 to 14%. And you know what? If every one of these vehicles had this kind of capability, our capacity of our roadway system, again, this is idealistic, everybody's got this technology, doubles the capacity of our highway system based on our simulations. So our ongoing work is indeed a national connectivity uh, a connected vehicle fleet infrastructure footprint analysis where we've got the American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials working with us to take a look at what kinds of applications are going on or could go on in the states and would help feed this guidance that we're going to be giving in, 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 uh, in 2015. The speed harmonization development I've already told you about. We're actually going to pipe in speed advisories to real vehicles on Interstate 66, and it's going to go right to their cruise controls. Oh my goodness, the car companies are going to allow that? No, they're our cruise, cruise controls. We've modified these vehicles to do this. The role of government is to look further ahead so that industry can look to us and see this is public information. This kind of technology can work in this capacity. Stuff that the automobile industry doesn't share with the public. So our role in government is to share this information, not only with the public, but also the private sector as well. So we've got five test vehicles, and uh, we want to proactively manage that bottleneck on I-66. We've got exploratory advanced research that, that's not been awarded yet on high-performance vehicle streams, new approaches for testing connected uh, uh, highway and, and vehicle systems, which NHTSA is, 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 is adamantly in favor of. How do we even test this kind of technology? Innovative applications for emerging real-time data, so the form of data. If you take a look at these cars and trucks, they emanate 10 times a second, a broad array of information. What do you do with all of these data? What we're doing is, is making a standardized database that researchers can get their hands on, because they don't have it themselves, and mine that to whatever desire they want to achieve their dissertation, their master's thesis, and ultimately provide an advantage to the company, to the country. Partial automation of truck platooning. Opening an entrepreneurial marketplace. So we talked about this traffic signal system, right? And it's broadcasting signal phase and timing. I could pull down an app, if it existed, of what that signal phase and timing is, and, and God knows what an entrepreneur could do with that information. 
Clearly, it might help a blind person cross the street with more assurance of whether the signal is green. I know I'm over here. Okay. Conclusion. Infrastructure can provide value information that can enable and accelerate automation. Federal Highway continues to advance automation through R&D. And the point is this. Everybody's looking at level three and four. There's loads that can be, loads that can be done at levels one and two. And so that's what we're after towards an evolutionary approach of getting these systems deployed. That's it, I think.